March 31st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapter 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. How blessed is the one who does not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand in the pathway with sinners, or sit in the assembly of scoffers. Instead, he finds pleasure in obeying the Lord's commands. He meditates on his commands day and night. He is like a tree planted by flowing streams. It yields its fruit at the proper time, and its leaves never fall off. He succeeds in everything he attempts. Not so with the wicked. Instead, they are like wind-driven chaff. For this reason, the wicked cannot withstand judgment, nor can sinners join the assembly of the godly. Certainly the Lord guards the way of the godly, but the way of the wicked ends in destruction. Why do the nations rebel? Why are the countries devising plots that will fail? The kings of the earth form a united front. The rulers collaborate against the Lord and his anointed king. They say, let's tear off the shackles they've put on us. Let's free ourselves from their ropes. The one enthroned in heaven laughs in disgust. The Lord taunts them. Then he angrily speaks to them and terrifies them in his rage, saying, I myself have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. The king says, I will announce the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son. This very day I have become your father. Ask me, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, the ends of the earth as your personal property. You will break them with an iron scepter. You will smash them like a potter's jar. So now, you kings, do what is wise, you rulers of the earth. Submit to correction. Serve the Lord in fear. Repent in terror. Give sincere homage. Otherwise, he will be angry and you will die because of your behavior. When his anger quickly ignites, how blessed are all who take shelter in him. God, the other day I was reading David Platt's book, Radical. Thank you for the gifts you gave him to write that book. It's awesome. In there, he says quite a few amazing things. One which speaks volumes with what I just read. He says, we desperately need to explore how much of our understanding of the gospel is American and how much is biblical. I think we really miss the point. I think we have sold out to American religion, American Christianity, and a comfortable lifestyle that goes along with it that simply says, if you come to church and you believe in me, you're good to go, you're saved, you're going to heaven. It's not what the Bible says. Right here, very first psalm in the book of Psalms. For this reason, the wicked cannot withstand judgment, nor can sinners join the assembly of the godly. We are all that. We are all sinners. We are all wicked. And if it wasn't for the fact that your son died on the cross for us, for our sins, we would have no hope whatsoever. But you say, not only believe in me, but confess your sins. Believe that my son died for those sins. Believe that he rose again after three days. Believe that he ascended into heaven and is seated with me. And upon believing that, with a radically changed heart, go. Go make disciples of the nations. Go tell other people about me. Go. Today, God, help us to go. Help us to understand that we are not here on earth for all of these worldly things that we get so caught up in and sidetracked with. We are here to glorify you. Everything in this entire universe was made for your glory. God, allow my heart and my life and my actions and my words to glorify you today. Allow the knowledge of what a Christian is to fall away from my heart and my mind. 
and allow your words to just seep in and fill up my entire life. God, tears fall from my face at the thought that you chose me, that I am one of your chosen, elect children. I even shake as I say that, that you chose me and you chose so many others and there's so many people out there waiting to hear the gospel. Send us, God. Send us and allow your will to set our feet on the path that you want us to go. Allow what is in your will, those words to come out of our mouths. And if we are to write, that those be your words and your directives that you need people to hear. God, it's just amazing watching you work when we do what we're supposed to do. Thank you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.